This is United We Strike Radio on the International Community Radio Network. Don't buy, don't comply, ask why. UnitedWeStrike.com Radio. Thank you everyone for tuning back into the United We Strike Radio Marathon. Here is December, Saturday, the 14th. 2013. I am Matt Navarro, host of the New World Order Report, and in this segment of uh, our marathon, uh, we have a special topic we wanted to address. So, to to help us do that, we have a couple of uh, great supporters and hosts here uh, on United We Strike um, to help us discuss our, our topic today, and that is this this creation that what I believe is is uh, a CIA created teleprompter reading puppet we call Barry Satoro, otherwise known as Barack Hussein Obama, uh, being in office, behaving rather dictatorially, and I think now mainstream media, or I don't want to call them mainstream, they're not the mainstream anymore, the corporate-controlled media uh, is even saying things like, you know, he's really starting to act like a dictator. And so our our founding fathers, in their great wisdom, gave us tools to handle uh, eliminating problem executives, the chief executives in, in, in our country, and that would be the president. And that is our topic today. How do we remove this CIA-created cartoon teleprompter reading puppet from office? And our guest today to help us discuss that is none other than Phil Ristino from We Shall Not Be Silent and Charles Irwin, author of the book American Freedom, a conversation with America for change in the United States. Thank you, gentlemen, for being on the show today. Thank you, Matt. Good to be here, Matt. Uh, always great to have you, Charles. You know that. Uh, we miss you around here. Always good to hear your voice. Okay, Phil, this is something that's dear to your heart. Uh, you're from the Veterans for Peace, and you've had this long-going hmm, turmoil trying to get them to adopt a resolution to, to call for the impeachment of Obama like uh, they did with uh, Bush. So can you tell our audience from your perspective uh, or, or tell us about that, the, the article you wrote and, and what your situation is currently with the Veterans of Peace? Oh, great. Thank you, Matt. Um, the, the article is entitled Timeline to Veterans for Peace's Vote to Impeach Obama. 2009 through 2013 and uh, uh, you could find that on activistpost.com I'd like to thank uh, Michael Edwards and all the other good people over at Activist Post for uh, giving us the opportunity to get that article out um, again the title Timeline to Veterans for Peace's Vote to Impeach Obama 2009 through 2013 and uh, uh, again uh, uh, any change Matt and, and you hear it from a number of the uh, programs on the United We Strike uh, radio it, it's got to come from the people we are the answer I believe and uh, you know there's all kinds of uh, uh, issues about the actual structure of government and is it legitimate and what Charles is specialized in, uh, in, in legal and lawful and, and, and all that and I'm sure he'll be able to talk more about that but I'm more uh, concerned about what the, the people, the everyday person here that, that uh, has this uh, government acting in our name on our watch on our dime you know, and and uh, uh, the call. I'm I'm mo most concerned about the call for impeaching a criminal president, uh, and it's got to it's got to start with a call from the people. And that call was made for the behavior of uh, wars of aggression, torture, and, and etc. that were initiated under uh, the Republican Bush. And Veterans for Peace was a very uh, strong. Uh, a leading voice in that call and that's how I came to find out about them was in June of 2005 I, I saw one of their uh, uh, members give a fiery speech uh, online uh, Mike Ferner who who has served as the national president of Veterans for Peace as well 
And uh, he basically was saying, not only is it our responsibility as citizens, but our duty as veterans to call for nothing less than impeachment of this criminal president. You know, and that got me to join Veterans for Peace and get active in the anti-war movement. And that call was uh, con continued up until the Democrat Obama got into office. Then all of a sudden it wasn't strategic, is their, their uh, reason, uh, to call for impeaching the Democrat. Even though uh, impeachment, as long as it's a partisan call, is pretty much... Uh, 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 guaranteed not to not to work. Now, but, Phil, why did why did they change their mind on on impeaching the Democrat? I don't understand what's the, what would be the difference. Well, I believe that uh, you know they that they're more about the organization. They're friends in the uh, in, uh, on their side of the aisle, so to speak. You know, and I'm speaking of the of the uh, anti-war left organizations. Uh, more about that. And willing to to put off ending the war, uh, the main concern is they, they that they give. You know, this is the the answer they give when asked is they they don't want to be uh, affiliated with racist organizations. That's what? The, that's yeah, that's their reasoning. Uh, uh, the Veterans for Peace uh, board wrote it in their. Uh, we had a res actually Veterans for Peace. Finally, on the third year trying, uh, passed the resolution at the 2011 convention to impeach Obama for the same war crimes we cited in the call for impeaching Bush, but the national leadership did not carry it through like they did with uh, the Republican Bush. They, they, they refused to send a letter to Congress. They refused to uh, make that avail, you know, first create the letter and send it you know, calling on Congress to impeach Obama, uh, as they had done for the Republican Bush. And uh, in in 05, uh, that document was made as a fl downloadable flyer for, for members of Veterans for Peace to use in their own activism, to lobby their own uh, members of Congress, their local communities, pass the flyers out in their communities to get their... Uh, 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 neighbors uh, educated and aware of it and to have more people press their, their member of Congress and, and contact their local media. That was all not provided and asked for for two and a half years up until this recent summer. We actually put in a resolution which, if passed, would have forced the president of Veterans for Peace to issue the letter and make it available as a download. And the votes were tallied this week. And uh, the measure failed uh, quite by a, quite a large margin, and I'm scratching my head as to how, uh, after speaking with close to 300 chapter contacts uh, over the months, uh, it, it's puzzling to me. But it's it's a done deal now. So, but but that's Veterans for Peace. That's the leadership of these national organizations who still to this very day will not apply the same standard of a public call for impeachment. Again, a public call for impeachment uh, to the Democrat president, and it continues to keep uh, the people's remedy so, of impeachment as a partisan issue. And as long as it's partisan, it's ineffective. It's correct, not a threat. Correct. And, and so what you've described for me is what I'm starting to get the picture of Veterans for Peace of is, is controlled opposition. It's like Greenpeace or uh, the World Wildlife Fund. It's all controlled opposition uh, so that you can control who uh, is your, your voice against whatever program you have? Uh, it, it, I, I'm starting to think it's just a false front there. Your thoughts on impeachment of Obama, Charles, from a constitutional scholar's perspective, you know, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I wouldn't call myself a constitutional scholar, but I do. I would. I do know the law, <laughs> and you know the, the Constitution's uh, Article Article Two, Section Four says the President, Vice President, and all, any civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for conviction of treason, bribery, or high, high crimes and misdemeanors. So, almost Obama certainly has created. Uh, Treason, bribery, high crimes, and misdemeanors, and so has everybody in Congress. 
the problem we have is Congress has to call for treason. <laughs> and, and they're involved in it, so they're not going to do it. I don't think there is the political guts to make this happen in America anymore. There are, I, I believe our Congress is so compromised based on whatever money they might be taking under the table or getting from the side or weird deviant activities they might be involved in that if exposed could, could, um, you know, take down a lot of them. So I think they're, they're blackmailed in a sense to going along with the program. So even as, as much as, uh, uh, we, we call for it, um, I don't think there's, there's a political will there. What, what about you, Phil? Again, this is, uh, and again, it's not about uh, – I'm looking at this, Matt and Charles, as uh, this issue being about what we the people do. It's got to start with us. Yes, yeah, we, yeah. Have, we, we have totally lost our so-called representative government. You know, I mean, I think that's – we can all agree on that. Uh, so – and here's, here's the uh, – the, uh, this is the argument that the people – uh, that don't want to see a public call for impeachment use for anyone like myself who says, hey, why aren't we should be doing this for the Democrat too? They say, heck, no, it's not going to work, so don't waste your energy trying. And there you go. You never get off the ground. The change, we've lost our representative government. We have to take it back. Uh, Frederick Douglass, uh, the, the, the great uh, statesman and abolitionist, and um, it, it said, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. Uh, you know, asking these, these people in Congress and, and, and giving our money uh, to, to uh, campaigns to elect people to a system that's totally controlled as you mentioned by money big money and uh that ain't that ain't doing it we got to get off our asses and and start demanding and it's it we've got to start the process and it starts with a public call for it and uh no member of congress is going to go out on a limb on anything unless uh he or she uh feels that they have some backing from the people um so we we've got the the what is it the cart before the horse or the you know we we've we've got to look at what needs to come first in the process i would yeah. agree with you go ahead yeah, I, I, I totally agree uh the people are going to have to take our government back because everybody in government today from uh local state and federal are, you know, most of the officers are committing treason. There is a totally different government they have in place. It's a corporate government, and that fits uh, the the mode of treason. You know, it, it's a crime to create a separate government than the one the founding fathers created. They had a separate constitution, a separate set of laws, legal laws, and we should have lawful laws. So they're all committing treason, mostly knowingly, and some unknowingly. But, uh, you know, it's going to be up to the people to do something because, you know, they like things the way they are. And I'm working on a new book called How to Restore America's Republic Without Politicians. And we can do that with uh, petite juries and mostly grand juries because grand juries have the ability to investigate anyone, any corporation, any officer of the United States, local, state, or federal. Now, what's happened is the district attorneys of the bar have have uh, usurped our grand juries and they control them. Mm -hmm. You know, so the grand juries only get 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 uh, uh, criminal charges put before them, legal charges that they want to use to put us away. You know, we have to force our grand juries to take a look at investigating the government corporations because they have that power. They just don't know it. Well, <clears throat> you're right, Charles, and I, I look forward to when you have that book out to get you back on the show so we can discuss that, uh, your new book, because I'm sure our, our audience would be interested. Uh, yeah, we'll be looking at people like, you know, organizations like Veterans for Peace, you know, can I'm going to have petitions that, that drawn up that they can just sign the petition. 
to their grand juries, and we can go from there and let the people decide what needs to be done. You know, it, that's why we're here at UnitedWeStrike.com. It's our mission here to help teach, alert, inform people so that they can take this information, make better decisions for themselves, but also to help provide uh, information to other people, to teach other people. Because you're right, Phil, it has to start with us here at this level. And if there is enough of us uh, who have who make a groundswell of political change from, from petite juries to grand juries to influencing our local city governments like, like Michael Shaw advocates, you know, we will then start, start, start to turn the tide against this new world odor. Now, we <laughs> not just only here in the United States, but we have to be mindful that this is a global plan. There's global players, so people from around the world need to participate in this noncompliance as well and start changing their governments from the, uh, uh, the local level in their countries as well, because without that, we don't stand a chance. This is a global operation. Like Gary Hendershot, our producer, was saying, you know, if, even if we impeach the puppet Obama, then we get Biden. How much better is that? Well, I, I don't know that that's any better, but that perhaps we demonstrate the political will as a country, and then we will be saving lives around the world, innocent lives around the world, from from these drone attacks, the latest uh, was what fourteen people killed in a in a wedding caravan in Yemen, Yemen. And, you and know that's that's what we're hearing about. This is happening every day, and and uh, uh, the 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 thing is, I I, I do want to interrupt you here. Your, your Gary's comment about you know, okay, let's say we impeach Obama, then we get Biden. Is that it? This isn't. We're we're jumping way ahead. I'm talking about the people calling for impeachment. We've got to just do that and 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 look back in history. Uh, uh, part of the reason why uh, Bush Senior called the ceasefire on 28 February 1991 and did not proceed further into Iraq to topple the I I Iraqi government was there were articles of impeachment uh, uh, waiting. Uh, Henry Gonzalez, representative out of Texas, had uh, uh, articles of impeachment which uh, Professor Francis Boyle had worked on drafting with him. And uh, there was a threat of impeachment. You see, we want to change the behavior, which is to stop the, the killing in our name. And the thing about the president is he's the commander-in-chief of the military, but he's servant to the people. And uh, one thing about being the commander-in-chief of the military, that commander-in-chief can order a cease fire at any time without any need for authorization from Congress or anybody else. And that's where the power of the people are right here. And the, the remedy, the people's remedy of impeachment, it doesn't have to be carried out. It, it can be used as a threat to change the behavior, which is to stop the war, and, and, you know, and stop the killing. And, and right there in, is, uh, looking back at history, right there with Bush Sr. Uh, uh, in 91. And also uh, President Nixon, you know, uh, there were, uh, there's a lot to the Nixon uh, impeachment resignation story you know but but in general nixon resigned um at because the threat of impeachment uh, right you know he didn't want to go through the impeachment proceedings and you know god knows what that would have revealed you know um was it really about the, the watergate you know or, or operation 40 and all that other stuff and the kennedy thing you know you could go crazy off that but the point is it it was effective in stopping this man we stopped him and and that's what i mean about the people calling for it and and we've got to stop 
taking this bait and jumping ahead. Well, okay, if you do that, then the Republicans will get in, or then you'll have Biden in, or or Pelosi, or whoever, you know, uh, it, uh, Boner, whatever. You, well, you there's know. no difference in Republican and Democrat. Exactly. I mean, right. And that's, and, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Charles, and I know we're, that's my point about why the people can't get behind that is because the people have this this loyalty uh, to 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 team to party the big concern with veterans for peace as far as those who were against the impeachment of obama resolution were it, without every time was what do you want republicans to get in to see that's how they're see they're seeing this in the context of politics and anyone who's listened to united we strike knows that there is no difference between we know yeah. that right but, well so, you know uh, i kind of disagree with you though though okay. phil um because i think if we had enough public outcry like you say for the call to impeachment okay uh through the, through the the alternative or the what's uh, what we call the media uh through the internet and uh the like um, if there is enough of a groundswell to call for impeachment, may be enough to stop Obama. But I personally would like to see him impeached because yes. of the crimes that he's guilty of. Okay, within three days of his inauguration, he called for drone strikes in Pakistan. We're not at war with Pakistan, but we're killing people in Pakistan. Ended up being goat herders, you know, innocent people. He needs then to be impeached and then sent to tried. Tried and then sent to prison. Yeah, he continued. Yes. He continued what Bush was doing, and he he upped the ante. He he got worse. He's worse yes. than Bush. All right. under left cover, and this is my point. Obama's been able to do what Bush couldn't because of left cover, and the left cover is not applying the same standard to your own guy. Sure. And 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 this is where the people are to blame. Yeah, but for, the people for, should know they don't have a guy. There is no guy. Right. We don't, but, Democrat but they, and Republican are controlled at the highest levels by the same special interest groups. And if you follow it down, so are these organizations, the Tea Party, yeah. the, the, the Veterans for Peace, the Code Pink. The, you know, you never see any one of them working together with the other side on the common ground. And that's where we've really missed the boat. Uh, our man Tom Santoni, at third day in office, Obama bombed Pakistan. He wrote an article in response, impeach Obama. And that's what began our call from the Central Florida chapter. And it's a timeline to Veterans for Peace's vote to impeach Obama, 2009 through 2013. Please take a look at it, folks, uh, uh, and act on it, maybe. That's why we have to keep... Uh, doing what we do here at the United We Strike, continue to to discuss these issues to help folks understand what's going on in the world. That that we are controlled by special interests, banking and corporate interests, uh, ultimately, and and to awaken to that so that you can what we say here not buy, not comply, and ask why. You know that non-compliance part I think is especially uh, true. Mm. You know, so so we can say as one people, as one species, one planet, saying no, we don't like this anymore. So we we need to continue doing what we do, so we can help change the minds of the average folks and bypass these roadblocks put in our place as as you know, veterans for peace or the uh, Greenpeace or whatever, the, the you know this this controlled opposition, and then make changes from the local, then up chain to the federal. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I also agree with Phil. You know, we're doing what we need to be. It has to come from the people and have to, have to do something. Have to say something. I, I think what we need to, what I'd like to see, guys, is a, a solid example. You know, we talk about breaking the left-right paradigm and putting differences aside and coming together on a common issue. But how many tangible examples of that can we really point to, you know, very, very few. This is so ingrained in the 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 American people that this this uh, uh, left right 
uh, uh, it's, stuff. It's like their it's like their religion. You know, yes, left right is like their religion. And and even if you agree agree uh, even in the, the same company publicly agree, you we need to see somebody's got to be the first out on the dance floor. And there was a group out in Oregon uh, that uh, Larry and I had on our radio show uh, right, uh, back in the two thousand early two thousand twelve. They had come out against the. Uh, uh, they joined together to protest the. NDAA indefinite detention. It was the people from their local Occupy group got together with people from the local uh, Patriot or Tea Party group, and they actually did it. And neither the right or the left wants you to see those YouTubes. <laughs> nope. Need to wrap. Need to wrap here, Phil. So uh, let's get your website out. And uh, thank you for being on. We'll we'll catch you later with Larry Pickney at uh, three thirty Pacific time, I believe it is. Well, go ahead and uh, let us know your website there, Phil. Oh, well, uh, Larry and I are doing a, uh, a radio show Monday night. We're going to have Michael Rivero as our guest, and uh, he did that YouTube, uh, 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 oh boy, All Wars Are Bankers Wars, and it's going to be on Wolf Spirit Radio. Dot com Monday night, 16 December, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern. Excellent. And Charles, your website, please. And thank you for coming on today with us. We appreciate your time. Website's AmericanFreedomBooks.com. And uh, there's right now there's a 50% off on the ebook. Excellent. Excellent deal. And we can't wait to have your new book come out. We'll get you back on the show then. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for being on the show today. My website, nwodor.com, brand new website. Please check it out. I'll be talking about that more later on. We've got Deborah Everett Snyder, Dinah, excuse me, Dinah Everett Snyder coming up, and I'll be on with her at the bottom of the next hour. And uh, if, if everything goes well, uh, we'll talk to you next time, guys. Thank, thank you, and uh, take care. Thank Bye-bye. you, Matt. Bye, this Charles. is thank United We Strike you. Radio on the International Community Radio Network. Don't buy, don't comply, ask why. UnitedWeStrike.com radio.